Hey guys, it's Dave. Thanks for watching as always. Today I'd like to talk to you about Firefly Aerospace. It's a brand new, it's a new space startup. They recently successfully launched their first rocket into orbit and deployed satellites successfully. I just wanted to talk about the implications of this for the overall market and Rocket Lab as a Rocket Lab investor. But first of all, I'd like to share with you a little video I put together of some footage of Firefly's first failure to launch and finally successfully launching into orbit. So let's take a quick look. So sorry the footage of the launch wasn't too great. It was at nighttime, so it was hard to see the rocket taking off and hard to see it uh, flying through the air. But we did see those two little satellites kind of separate off from the rocket, which was pretty cool. Of course, congratulations to Firefly for successfully getting into orbit. It's something that many companies have tried and failed to do. So congratulations to them. But uh, let's bring this discussion back to the overall marketplace and as a rocket lab investor or investors if you're watching this uh, what does this mean for us by the way guys uh, before we continue on I just want to say please hit like and subscribe down below to help out the channel I really appreciate every single subscriber I have you guys mean more to me than I think you realize and I'm interested to hear your comments down below on what you think of Firefly as a company as well and how they compare to a rocket lab the long and short of it is that I'm not too worried about it uh, in terms of impacting Rocket Lab's business. There's a few reasons for this. So um, first of all, this is just their first flight, and Peter Beck has said many times that it's actually more difficult to consistently launch successfully than just get one into orbit. So uh, definitely huge milestone for the company, but it got a long road ahead in terms of being able to consistently manufacture or, and launch payload successfully with no failures. The other thing is that the payload to orbit on Firefly's Rocket Alpha is about one ton, which is a lot more than uh, Rocket Lab's Electron at about 230 kilograms, and also a lot less than Rocket Lab's Neutron. So it's kind of uh, in the middle there, not really a direct competitor to either rocket, I would say. Um, 
kind of an interesting spot. So Peter Beck was asked about this at one point. What does he think of a one-ton launch vehicle? And he said he felt like it was kind of no man's land, like it was too big to be just a small sat launcher for dedicated small sat rides, but it's too small to launch the big heavy payloads that you would think of for a Falcon 9 or a larger rockets so he felt like it was a no man's land it wasn't a good place to be however we've seen firefly disagree with this they're shooting right for that one ton space so we'll see who's right on this we'll see if there's a market for the one ton payload capacity or not the projected cost of a launch for Firefly's Alpha rocket is 15 million, which is about double an Electron rocket. So if you can fit your payload on an Electron, you're not gonna pay double to launch on a Firefly Alpha. Now they may be able to do some ride sharing capabilities, but that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the small launch space. The small launch space is really designed to allow you to put your specific satellite exactly where you want it to go if you need to have a certain orbit certain time of day inclination all these complicated things uh, that's kind of the advantage of a small dedicated ride to space versus a large ride share so while rocket alpha can do ride sharing um it's definitely uh losing that benefit that the small launchers do provide over, say, a Falcon 9 rideshare, for instance. So I'm not too sure uh, how the rideshare market will shape up for Alpha, but I'll be interested to watch going forward and see how many launches they will get. The other thing is that Electron is very soon going reusable. If you're looking at Electron going up against Alpha, Electron being reusable and Alpha not, that's another reason why Electron, I think, will be more competitive if they were even shooting for the same payloads, which I think in most cases they won't be. So I'm not too worried about the impact that Alpha is going to have on Electron. Now, having said that, Firefly does have a second larger rocket planned in the future. This rocket is going to shoot for about 13 tons to orbit is my understanding, and that would make it a direct competitor with Neutron. So um, there could be some concerns from a Rocket Lab shareholder point of view if you're looking at their second generation vehicle. However, I have a few, few thoughts on this as well. Number one, it's a long way out. I mean, they've just had their first launch of their first vehicle to already talk about about being worried about their next one is, I think, extremely premature. Personally, I expect Neutron to be launching far before we see their MLV vehicle going up. I believe they're calling it Beta. But So uh, I'm not too worried about this vehicle taking away demand for Neutron, at least in the near term. Maybe in the longer term when it's launching, uh, we, we could have some concerns there. But the other thing to think about is that once again, Neutron is designed from the ground up to be reusable. That's kind of the primary principle behind its design. We've seen a lot of discussion about being able to return to launch pad, being able to land down range for at about 13 tons, so very similar payloads. Firefly Beta is not planned to be reusable, which to me just means it will not be competitive. Uh, I think if you're looking at one rocket where 90% of the rocket is being reused, you just have a small upper stage, which is basically just one engine that you're losing every time in the Neutron, and Beta with Firefly that you're losing the entire rocket, I just don't see how you can really compete on a cost basis. I'm sure maybe there's enough customers for both of them in the market going forward, but I really am not worried about Neutron losing significant amounts of business to Firefly's beta rocket way down the line whenever both of them are launching. I wouldn't expect it before, you know, six years or something like that. Now, Firefly does have some other th things going for them, though. I'm not just here to bash on Firefly. Uh, it's still impressive that they made it to orbit. Anytime you design a rocket, it's impressive feat. They have some future plans around landers. They're selling engines to uh, Northrop Grumman, I believe. So I I'm not saying, like, I'm worried about Firefly going out of business, but... You know, as a Rocket Lab investor, my primary thought is, is this really going to impact Rocket Lab? And to me, the answer is no. I'm really not worried about this one in terms of stealing market share away from Rocket Lab. Uh, now, I want to show you something here. 
Firefly also has this idea for an interesting space plane type idea that's reusable. This is basically the only reusable product they have planned as far as I can tell. Testing is planned for the late 2020s. It's really just a concept at this stage, but it does look pretty cool. So um, we'll see how it goes. I know like the thing with the shuttle being basically a reusable space plane is that was designed to bring down cost to orbit, and it really didn't work. The shuttle was extremely expensive. They had to do all this refurbishment. So we'll see if Firefly is able to kind of succeed where the shuttle failed. Um, it will be an aerospiked engine and 5,000 kilogram payload. So uh, slight, about five times the size of their Alpha rocket. Very interesting to see. Um, this is their one kind of glimpse at reusability but it's really just a concept right now so again with this not too worried about it impacting electron or neutron for rocket lab it is an interesting company to watch um their engines are pretty cool they they are a private company though so even if we wanted to invest in them we can't perhaps one day they'll go public and then i'll look at them a lot more closely but uh for my money right now, I would definitely stay with Rocket Lab, even if I could invest in these guys on the public markets. So that's just my thoughts on Firefly. Congratulations to them on an extremely successful launch. And uh, let's I'll be interested to see what the future has in store for this company. Bye for now. <laughs>